Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at dispersion. Dispersion is one of the consequences of refraction as light enters from something like air into something like water. Dispersion means that we can divide white light into different colors, which is what produces rainbows, of course. Now it turns out that a material's refractive index, which we've been covering in the previous section, is not going to be the same for every wavelength of light. That is, for green light, it'll be one value, but for red light, it'll be a very slightly different value. It might simply be the difference between 1.33 and 1.34, or something similar. What this means is that if we have two beams of light, but they're slightly different colors, even if they enter exactly the same prism, they'll both deflect at very slightly different angles. And of course, if we have a very, very long distance traveled by those two beams of light, even that small difference in angles will result in a large difference when they finally reach a target. Remember that if we have a triangle, even if it's got a very, very small angle, then it will still have an opposite side. And the longer that triangle is, the larger that opposite side will be. What this means is that if we have light that consists of more than one wavelength, then we can split it into different colors. The light from our sun, for example, is made out of all the wavelengths between red light and violet light, with a bit of infrared light and ultraviolet light thrown in too. So white light is made out of not just one color, not just three colors or seven colors, but all the possible colors between the red wavelengths, that is about 700 nanometers, and the violet wavelengths, that is about 400 nanometers. So every single wavelength between these two numbers is a color of visible light, and it's what sunlight consists of. So each color, because they all have slightly different wavelengths, will refract at a slightly different angle to every single other color. As we get further and further away from the source of refraction, the colors will keep spreading out. We can see that in this picture over here. Normally, we can examine this effect by using glass or plastic prisms. This process is called dispersion. Light is dispersing into its different colors. We can see in this prism that the white light coming in from the top of the picture is being dispersed into its different colors, which we can see coming out of the prism at the bottom of the picture. In the lab, we usually use prisms. We know from mathematics that prisms are simply three-dimensional shapes that have two faces identical and then just straight lines joining them all up. In this case, we have a triangular prism. However, in reality and out of the school laboratory, we can see refraction in many other objects as well. In particular, we can see them in gemstones or raindrops or in worked glass. We can see in this gemstone over here that the white light illuminating it is being split into many different colors, which we can see through the different facets of the gem. Another way that we can observe dispersion in real life is in rainbows. Rainbows are a phenomenon caused by the dispersion of light through water. In this case, we don't have, you know, a big pool of water or a prism of water. We have water droplets in the sky, each one of which behaves like a tiny prism. So dispersion occurs because the blue light and the red light and all of the different colors of light in between those two will diffract at slightly different angles. In particular, the blue light will bend further than the red light. So the refractive index for blue light in water is higher than the refractive index for red light in water. So how exactly does the light behave as it enters the water? Well, it looks something like this. We can see that the sunlight coming in from the left of the diagram will refract and begin to disperse when it comes into the raindrop. The blue light will bend a little bit more than the red light. And of course, the yellow light, which is in between the red and blue wavelengths, will be slightly in between these two. There's obviously an almost infinite amount of colors in between red and blue, but I've left most of them out for clarity. So what happens when it reaches the opposite side of the raindrop? it bounces back. We can see that they'll cross over in the middle of the raindrop before reaching the opposite side and then coming out. So the sunlight will refract as it exits the raindrop and then continue to disperse. We can see that it's spreading out here a little bit more than it was inside the raindrop. What we have is a separation of different colors coming out of the raindrops. So it means that we can see the blue light, yellow light, and red light, as well as all the colors in between, separating out into bands and they'll look something like this, a rainbow. So they're best seen by having the, the dispersed light shining into your eyes. And of course, as we saw in the previous picture, the dispersed light comes out in the same direction that the incoming light came from. If the sunlight comes in from the left, then the refracted light will come out to the left. Then we're going to be wanting to be facing away from the sun. That is, we want to be standing on the left of this droplet facing to the right. 
the sunlight will sort of come past you, bounce off the droplets in front of you, and be reflected forward into your eyes. From the ground, we can't see all of the rainbow. In theory, if we had a rainbow like this, then if there was a lot of water vapor just below the level of the horizon, then we'd be able to see it continue to curve down. Unfortunately, we tend not to be able to see water moisture if it's underneath the ground, and of course light can't pass through the ground either. So normally when we look at a rainbow, we can only see the top half of it and not the rest of it. So what does the rest of it look like? Well, if you're in an aeroplane looking down at a rainbow, then you can see it. It'll look like a circle, as we can see in this photograph. It encircles almost the entire picture here. And this is because the water droplets that are able to refract the sunlight into your eyes aren't just part of a circle, but the whole circle all the way around. However, of course, this only applies if you can see the whole circle of water vapor. Now it turns out, if we have the light traveling at the right angle, then we can have the sunlight bounce off the inside of the droplet twice before it exits the droplet, and that's exactly what's happening over here. This doesn't happen quite as often as just the single bounce refraction, and so any sort of rainbow formed by this will be a bit fainter. We can also see that instead of the, the light bouncing through the water down like this, it ends up bouncing back up. So instead of light coming downward and then continuing downward, it'll start downward and then come up. This means that if we see a rainbow formed like this, its colors will be in a different order. They'll be reversed. What we'll get is a faint secondary rainbow. It'll be fainter than the stronger colored primary rainbow, and it will have a different order of colors to the primary rainbow. You can see that in this case of the double rainbow, the red is on the inside and the violet is on the outside. And of course, its radius will be larger than that of the primary rainbow because of how the angles differ. So what we have here is a double rainbow all the way across the sky. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned about refraction and in particular dispersion and how it occurs in prisms and in the world around us in, for example, rainbows.